that uh, biological invasion is causing problem. It's now uh, really realized by decision makers. So the European Union is uh, currently trying to prepare sort of uh, legislation in the subject to promote actions. And we thought that uh, in the European Herpetological Conference, the European Herpetologist community is also facing this type of issues. So along this uh, very complex subject, we can organize a one day event where we can exchange ideas and uh, share results. So generally, the invasive alien species is such a sub subject that uh, we're able to pull uh, many different type of topics. From the conservation point of view, the Dolichophis habitat is very important, not, for, not only for the snake, but for a lot of uh, protected species inside Hungary. The idea was that, uh, as we are the hosting, uh, uh, and main, more or less for the whole Europe, or even there are many uh, participants coming from other continents, that we first try to show the situation in the Central European areas. So there were five presentations from this region, in which first two presentation was showing the invasive alien species uh, in Hungary uh, and uh, more or less how they affect uh, top priority uh, conservation issues like uh, the Hungarian meadow viper and uh, the Caspian whip snake. And uh, in these two presentations, we were showing uh, efforts how we are trying to restore natural grasslands, which, which were overgrown by these non-native plant species. The following presentations were from Slovakia, Czech Republic and Poland, where they were showing uh, very nicely how the, in these countries, as well as in Hungary, uh, there is a survey uh, on, for anyone to provide data on uh, alien species, and we were widening the context in which it means that we are not only dealing with alien or non-native herb species, amphibians and reptiles, but there are other species that are affecting these uh, our native uh, herpetofauna. Water frogs uh, have been sampled in 17 ponds. Well, this is uh, a map of the Bratislava city, and we sampled 17 ponds. Uh, these ponds have been mainly man-made uh, cradle pits and trigger arms occupied predominantly by Pelophylax ridibundus. Pelophylax lessonae and Pelophylax esculentus uh, have been less frequent and they live mainly in more natural water bodies along the river Danube. In the second uh, panel, uh, we, we were widening our focus uh, to Western Europe, so we had presentations from the Iberian Peninsula, Netherlands and the UK all showing us uh, examples uh, of uh, invasive alien species and how they are trying to tackle these problems. We have at least 10 species of amphibians and three reptiles that are established and breeding uh, at the moment. I think there could be several more that we just haven't got reported uh, properly, but those are the ones that we know definitely about. They range from a couple of species that are present at just one site, so, for example, Lacerta by Lineata, uh, right up to species which are very well established at maybe tens or even low hundreds of sites, such as Pilophylax uh, ridibundus. And in the last panel, we tried to show some uh, possible way for the future, or even current methodology can be used for many other species. So we had a very nice example of our detection of uh, alien species through uh, sampling water and then uh, from these water samples uh, we say the sort of environmental DNA uh, uh, extraction can show the presence or absence of such species and, uh, and also we had uh, some uh, genetic methods uh, showing the proof of hybridization between introduced and native species. So all in all, I think the general goal was to show how complex uh, this issue, this IAS, invasive alien species. Australia's got a very different kind of a problem than most parts of the world because we are so isolated and we always have been. This means that we're very vulnerable. There are many kinds of animals and plants from the rest of the world that can be a problem in Australia. But on the other hand, because those kinds of organisms don't live in Australia, it's much easier for us to come up with ways to control them because they're so different. 
from the native species. So it's a two-edged sword. On the one hand, there are more problems coming in. On the other hand, it's probably easier for us to deal with them. I think the biggest problems we have in Australia probably relate to the weeds and grasses that have been brought across for agriculture. They spread dramatically through the country, they change fire regimes, they change habitats for the animals, and they compete with the native plants. Unfortunately, they don't look very spectacular, they're just weeds, and so people don't seem to care as much about them as about some of the species, like cane toads, that probably are not really as big an ecological problem. As we came from many, many different directions, I, I saw through the questions that some of the methodology was new for participants. So, for instance, in the case of uh, trapping uh, uh, the, the sliders or, uh, or uh, frogs, actually, uh, we saw that there are many different types of tra traps, and it's a, it is a good way to share the ideas, and probably uh, I am thinking about using, for instance, the floating trap, which was presented by the Spanish uh, uh, speaker, actually, uh, I think uh, this methodology is really helpful uh, in, in, in case you can, like, you don't have to develop yourself the best way to uh, collect these uh, species or samples, but uh, you can use the experience of others. <laughs>